Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing? Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm sunny. I'm very, I'm very sunny. I think I might be burnt come tomorrow morning and not just because of the red lights behind me, just because I've been out in the yard all weekend, except of course for a, uh, a little break on Saturday. Oh, yep. Well, I forgot to hit send on this. There, there, there we go. Uh, Buckeye Esquire asks, uh, which team had San William Dixon? We will get into that. But before we get into that, Kyle, we have one piece of business. It's a new tradition, but it's a good tradition. It kind of it kind of fuzzed a little bit before I actually did the crack. I don't think that's a very good one, but that's OK. Yeah. Before we get into the meat of our episode here, just doing our. Our review of the spring game. Yeah, talk some uh, some commitments here yeah, Dur- yeah. during the spring game. Here we have a, a pair of uh, commitments. Here we have yep. a top five tight end commit, Nate Roberts from Oklahoma, committing to Ohio State as Expected. well as in state safety. Yeah, as well as in state safety, Haddad, uh, Cody Haddad uh, from from Cleveland. Uh, committing to Ohio State as well. Uh, at Roberts at tight end, expected, but still uh, very well welcomed, considering one of Ohio State's primary tight end targets committed to Miami, and another one has been receiving a lot of RPMs over at R. Uh, if you don't know, an RPM is the on three version of a crystal ball. Um, but yeah, a lot of RPMs heading towards. Uh, one of Ohio state's other primary tight end targets, uh, also sending them to Miami. Uh, so are we using on three more now? Yes. I, I, I am making the switch over with Wilt Fong switching over. I I think I'm going to, you know, we always used to say, you know, recruiting rankings, according to 24, well, I'm, 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 Friend of the show, Alex Gleitman's over there now. Um, and then, of course, you know, recently Will Fong switched over to on three. Um, I, I think that's going to be our primary source from here on out as far as recruiting rankings and all that go and following RPMs and everything. So but yeah, that's that's a whole other that's a whole other yep. thing that we don't need to get into. All right, let's- um, Haddad. We the second had dad decommitted from Wisconsin, we 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 knew where this was heading. Exactly. Uh, still obviously exactly. welcome to get the commitment, still great to get the commitment, but the second he com- decommitted from Wisconsin, we we knew what was up. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's let's go ahead and get into the the spring game here. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, Kyle, do you want to talk about the actual spring? Okay, you, uh, we we picked our we picked our game we picked our teams last week. Now, I was under the impression that we were just gonna we were gonna let the fans vote to see who won. But Kyle has painstakingly sure. uh, put together uh, a a collection of stats for each of our uh, teams. Now, before we get into that, I just want to point out we had two separate votes. We had a vote on the Discord server, and shockingly, Kyle destroyed me because everyone likes Kyle. Everyone's team Kyle. But but, but Kyle kind of slaughtered me in that. Now, however, Kyle, I also put a poll up over at Buckeye Huddle. And I'll mm-hmm. have you know that the results over at Buckeye Huddle also greatly favored you. <laughs> well, let's let's let's. Let's talk about the offense first here. Oh, it doesn't allow me to copy. Oh, Google Drive, you fail me. All right, I will do it the I will do it the hard way here. So here is our Wow. Sure. As soon as soon as I'm able to pull this up here. <laughs> having trouble. Kyle's having trouble. Um, yeah, I am. So of our two quarterbacks, uh Kyle had Devin go. Brown. I had Will Howard. Statistically speaking, very similar. 
Um, you might give a a a slight nod to Brown based off of based off of rushing stats, and he did also end up getting a touchdown, whereas Howard didn't. But stats aside, I I come out of the spring game unsurprised. I think a lot of what we are hearing through spring practice was like, and actually let's go ahead and pull up the grades because we can also be doing the grades as we talk about the quarterbacks. Um, a lot of what we were hearing from inside camp was that Devin Brown might be ahead as far as actually throwing the football, but that, well, Howard might be running the running the offense a little bit more efficiently. Um, and, I, and I don't that doesn't necessarily show in the spring game stats. But I think if you watched the game, I think that was the feeling I walked away with. Uh, essentially, Howard just looked a little more in command of the offense. Is, is that how you read it, Kyle? Yeah, it. I definitely read that like Will Howard, especially that first drive, it just he had a he had a really good feel with the with the offense there. Felt felt yeah, it just he was able to move that ball really well. And then the defense just stood up in the in the red zone there on that first drive. Yeah, I I'd I'd give the nod to Will Howard, but I mean Devin Devin Brown's right there. I mean, with Devin Brown's yeah. ability to run the ball, and you and you've heard a number of times from Brian Day talking about that running the quarterback this year, running the quarterback. So get, getting the quarterback more involved in the run, in the run game. Um, you said that a number of different ways during the, during the spring game. Would not surprise me. We see sprinkles of Devin Brown here and there. Is Devin. So is De, uh, So is, uh, so Devin staying. I tried to throw an is somewhere in there for you, Zach. Um, I would say so. Yeah. Um, I would, I, I, I hate, uh, talking about transfers is so tricky nowadays. We used to just never do it, but it's just, it feels silly to not talk about transfers in today's day and age. The portal is literally opening on the day we're releasing this. Um, I, my assumption is that both Howard and Devin Brown are going to stay, but I don't know that. Um, if anything, it's 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 Keenholz. I would be watching to enter the portal. Um, Saiyan looked, I mean, by tr true freshman being on campus for a moment, looked pretty decent. I mean, mm -hmm. he looked he looked pretty good considering that he's just he's been on campus long enough to get a cup of coffee. Um, and quite frankly, Air Noland. And Nolan was running a more simplified, little more read option version of the of the offense, granted. But man, he he looked he looked slick. Like he he had a he he was running read option like JT Barrett, and that is saying something. Like he was killing that read option. He um, was. He was. Air reminds me of fields yeah, I, running. Um, I don't, I, I, he, the, my, my feeling on air Noland was very JT Barrett, very, um, Kenny Guyton is, is sort of what he was reminding me of on the field on Saturday. Um, he had the camera completely fooled a few times. Yeah. The cameraman, uh, they Thank also you. had their third string in at that point. Smooth jazz air Nolan. Exactly. Overall, Kyle, what would you, what would you rate the quarterbacks? Oh. Honestly, it was, I, I would say like a B, B yeah. minus somewhere around there. I, I would just say B. I just say B. I completely agree. I think B, B minus. We'll just throw a B in there for the sake of ease. But yeah, I, I think a B is solid. 
you have to consider a lot of things with grading the quarterbacks. The defense is just monstrous. And not only is the defense yeah. monstrous, yeah. but the defense is also returning a bunch of experienced players. Whereas the offense is doing a little bit more of a rebuild. You have a new quarterback, you have a couple new offensive linemen, you know, you have a little bit of, you have, you, you lose Marvin Harrison. You're doing a little bit more of a change up on, on offense. Right. And the receivers yep, yep. aren't bad. I mean, of course, but it takes time to build rhythm with an offense um, defense had a lot of PI not called that. That's fair. Um, the refs, I think threw an entire flag on Saturday, uh, and probably could have had a couple more. Buka looks to be taking over. Buka had an excellent day. We'll talk about the wide receivers. He did. Yeah. Well, uh, Buka's let's, let's on the, the thumb now. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk about the running backs next here. Oh boy. Okay. So hold what, on. What, this, this what? is, this is. Oh, Kyle had the better running backs. Kyle picked the better running backs. Yeah, well, when I when I picked my running back, Hayden hadn't portaled yet, okay? <laughs> Hayden hadn't portaled yet. It's really not fair. And Kyle, do you not have any I mean, come on, you got you gotta help a brother out with, with Hayden, right? I mean, I did have I did have Williams Dixon. That helps. That helps. Okay, you even even if okay, yes, yes, you you did. But even even if you even if you add in like, I guess the other really the only other option you would have picked here for a running back would have been uh, uh, TC uh, Caffey. Then Caffey also had uh, he had five carries on the day, a um, couple yep. of catches. Caffey had a had a good spring game. He did. Yeah, he had, he had a really good game, too. But yeah, once again, Man. the defense was just on top of things. Man, but, I, but how how would you rate I, the running backs? Honestly, from what I've seen, I give an A. Yeah, I, I was very, very impressed with the with the um, with the running backs here. And, le and let me say this and, and as well. Speak. Mm, I, we're not necessarily ranking the coaches here, but I'm I'm very excited to see Chip Kelly's version of the Ohio State running game. Like, mm -mm. yes, yes, that that's exactly what I was about to about to talk here, Jared. Now, how much of this will will we actually see? But man, this got a lot of lot of Ohio State fans excited here, and I'm talking about the the first play. The, the first play here, you start off. You start off with this kind of formation, Jared. Mm -hmm. You start off with this kind of formation, and you're like, "What? Very, what is this?" And then, and then looks like a wildcat, some sort of some sort of yeah. wildcat, and then then a motion. And then happens. all of a sudden, and then the motion happens, and you're, and you're like, "It's it's a it's that meme with the uh w the old WWE owner where he just like excited and then all of a sudden you see this formation he just flies back into his chair." Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, but but the one th one thing here and this and play, for the record we aren't going to see a lot. We are not going to see a lot. Of no, this. We're, not, we're not. We're not. We're not. But still, this play would have been a first would have been a one play touchdown run here if if you saw um Judkins oops, I did not paste it in. yeah you see him cut in if you see him cut in there and actually get to that third level yeah, to yeah. block the uh to block the safety there mm, 32 to the house that is very well that could have a, been very well could have been defense not prepared for the wing tee. They were not prepared. Uh, and you know Esquire what? says, I don't, I don't, runs just, like I don't a expect tank. a lot of teams to be. No, <laughs> no, but they'd adjust. <laughs> uh, yeah. Esquire says, Caffey runs like a tank. SWD runs outside very well. Chip scheme has so much creativity and misdirection, including on play actions. 
Judkins is a monster running inside zones. Yes, yeah, yes. and and then it's it, it is funny because a lot of the running backs like to run in very different styles. Uh, whereas Henderson is very good running behind a like a, a pulling offensive lineman, sort of a one cut and go sort of guy. And I think one of the most important things is that they can all catch the ball as well. Yeah. Yeah. Look, looking at, uh, let me go back to my stats here. Looking at all of the running backs here, Jared, I'm scrolling up here. So Henderson had two catches. People had three catches. Uh, Judkins had a catch. Uh, Caffey had two catches. They're all, they're all getting uh, now. Yes. They're, they're all, they're all getting into the play to be able to make a catch, but, also, I think I think it's because of the defense really getting getting after the quarterback and the quarterback having to check down to the running backs more often too. And it was so. it was it was a lot of check down. <laughs> there was a lot of check down Charlie happening for sure. Yep. Uh, All right, offensive line, Jared. <sighs> yeah, the offensive line. I this this is one thing I was a little disappointed we in seeing here just because. We have to remember how good the defensive line is. Yes, how good the defensive line is and how how simple the offensive plays were in yep. this game here. And, exactly, and, Caleb, but. And I thought that the offensive but, but, line, at least the starting offensive line, blocked well for the running backs. Yes, yes. The first, the, first drive, the first drive was pretty well. Pass protection appears to still very much be an issue. Um, I would say that when they had the starting five on the field, which was not a lot, like even on the second drive, you know, the second drive with the quote unquote ones, because they had a, so, so it would have, it would have been they the, ran third, the first drive. It would have been the third drive. It would have been the third drive. Correct. Technically. Because the yeah. second drive, they had a full second string offensive line in. Yeah. The third drive, when the ones, quote unquote, ones came back out, they subbed in a couple different offensive linemen at some different positions. And what I'm seeing right now is that Ohio State does not have any depth at the offensive line position. I think they can put together a good, uh, I thought Fryer looked pretty decent. Uh, I didn't really even notice Simmons play, which is exactly what you want out of an offensive tackle. Um, yeah. Jo uh, same thing with Jackson. Uh, all the snaps were good. Um, I would say uh, we, we saw, and this was, this was rumored to have been happening after the student appreciation scrimmage. And, and we did see, um, we are seeing uh, Hinsman make the move from center to right guard. And we're seeing McLaughlin at center. So it looks like Ohio State has a right guard. It looks like Ohio State has a right tackle. Fryer looked uh, a little bit leaner, a little bit better on his feet. He did have some issues with um, with Jack Sawyer, but Jack Sawyer's going to give a lot of people issues this year. I thought I think the starting well, five. Well, I think the starting five are okay. I, I now, get, now the question is going to be not the question is going to be can those starting five be good enough for a national title contender? The uh, the starting five are good enough to win every single regular season game. They're, they're good enough to do that. Uh, and of course I, you can tell by the way I phrase that, what I'm, what, what, what am I not saying? Um, I, I really, 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 and it has to be the right guy. Like I'm not, I'm not saying go out into the portal and just get a guy. You don't need another body. Ohio state has bodies. Ohio state needs a starting tackle out of the portal still. In my opinion, 
I mean, they need a starting a starting level offensive lineman out of the portal period. And ideally at, at tackle. Because, you know, maybe Hinsman's the right guard. Maybe you can bump Fryer into right guard and have him play right guard and have a new tackle. And like Fryer looks better than Fryer looked last year. I, I don't know. I just if if there's an injury, I, I I don't know what happens if there's an injury. I, I yeah. think Ohio State, I think we know who the starting five Ohio State offensive linemen are right now. I am very concerned if some if anyone gets injured. Yeah. So if I'm going if I'm going for grading here. Based on what I've seen from the um, from the spring game, it like like a C, I would say. I'm gonna do a C, but I'm gonna toss a, I'm gonna toss a minus in there. Pa- pass protection needs to improve. Pass protection needs 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 to improve. Yeah. I mean, Pat, and and they need someone. They need a sixth guy, and I don't know that they have a sixth guy. I think the first yeah. injury brings Tegra. The next injury brings in Montgomery. I think it depends upon where. Yeah. Um. All right. I think um, it depends upon who gets hurt. I, I don't. I don't think either of them are the definitive sixth guy. Personally. Uh, Zach says snaps could have been better. I don't. But I didn't have the best angle. I, I, I mean, the the snap either works or it doesn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think our, uh, right. Esquire says uh, starting five will be fine with like one to two guys that won't kill us if they have to play. I honestly, mm. I'm not even sure about that. Um, but yeah. Kyle, before we move on to the tight ends. Uh, I want to take a quick commercial break. If you don't want to hear these commercial breaks, you can uh, join the Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, wh- there you can get your very own RSS feed or just listen straight through the Patreon app and avoid these commercials. Let's go ahead and take that commercial break now. Okay, Kyle. Tight ends. How do you feel about the tight ends? Uh it's definitely a drop down from last year. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll I'll say that it's definitely a definitely a drop down there. Uh, I thought Kits um, Merrick's barely been on the team at this point, and he had some good catches late in the game. And quite yep. frankly, I with the wide receivers being the wide receivers, and 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 for what it's worth, we also I think G Scott got hurt pretty early on. He he came off the field after his first catch. Spent most of the rest of the game on the bike. Um, and again, like with the running backs catching as well as the running backs are catching and with the wide receivers being who the wide receivers are, I don't, I don't know if I need or want a lot of pass per, uh, reception production out of the tight ends. Yeah. I, that's kind of what I'm thinking for this year. I know this year will not be the year of the tight ends. Uh, no, no, no. But yeah, it's it definitely a more of a a pass protection um, type of tight end this year. Yeah, Esquire says um, Kitzmerich in there mostly as an addition to the offensive line, which is fine with me. I, exactly, Esquire. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All right, so I'd say the tight ends C C plus. I'll, I'll just say C plus just to give them a better rating than the offensive line. <laughs> Just, just just to make that abundantly clear. Yes. Just to make sure. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna go a little bit more generous than you and do a B. Um right. as long as they're blocking well, I'm happy. And the wide receivers, Jared. Wide receivers. Uh hey Kyle, which one of us drafted um Brennan Scram and David Adolph. Uh, none of us did. Oh, okay. Uh, they collectively, 
Uh, the two of them collectively caught the ball seven times for 81 yards. Uh, seems like a seems like a real miss on our part. Uh, Scott yes, uh, Esquire says Scott's first catch was actually pretty nice too. Shame he came off limpy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a spring game. You get a little bit hurt. You get off the field. It's it's a glorified practice. So, yeah, Jeremiah Smith. I mean, you you see how smooth smooth of a runner he is there. Emeka, everybody's Hold everybody's going to talk about Jeremiah his. Smith. Two catches for 12 yards after all that hype. Kyle, is is he a bust? Are we ready? Are we re- Are we ready to hit the brakes on the J.J. Smith hype train? I'm kidding, of course. Not, not when you have Don't these, take me seriously, not when you have please. These shut down, not when you have these shutdown corners with with uh, with Burke and Igmanosin and uh, and Simpson. Hunt had a had a great game as well too. Like th- this this defense this this defensive corners are just and Caleb Downs as well are just a lockdown. They are lockdown defensive backs. They 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 played yeah exactly uh, Esquire. They played filthy all day on Saturday. Filthy both in a positive way and filthy in a uh, very grabby pushy sort of way. <laughs> Esquire also says uh, the scram kid had sweet hair to walk on with that kind of flow should have gotten more attention from the beat. Frankly, Esquire, <laughs> you're goddamn right. That dude needs to get in the NFL just so he can steal the heads and shoulders ads away from Troy Palomalo, who has been retired for quite some time now. I mean, the Fox right, broadcast so, hey, was blown um, away. Make a, Shout out to the yeah. Fox broadcast, by the way. That was an excellent, yes. very entertaining broadcast. I loved hearing from Ryan Day on the field. I loved Ryan Day and Urban Meyer talking on the field. Um, we don't, uh, Kyle, there's an Ask Loopcast question uh, from uh, from Duncan who asked us to grade the broadcast team. I didn't have time oh, to yeah. change the graphic. A plus. Yeah, a but yeah, plus. Fox did an A-plus job. Fox did an A plus yeah. job. That was that was amazing. Very very well done. Uh, so the rest of the receivers here, everybody's going to talk about that Emeka catch. Uh, I mean Emeka does Emeka things there, and yeah, so what a, what a great catch there. Emeka uh, got tired of JJ Smith getting all the attention this spring, and he's just like, hey yeah. <laughs> guys, I'm here too. Damn it. Well, and he almost made another one handed catch in the end zone too. He got, he got really close to doing it again. Yeah, it's kind of a fall away, uh, very um, very uh, JSN-like. And Kojo Antwi had himself a pretty good game, too. He had, he had three catches in here as well. Yeah. Um, I drafted Brennan Ennis, who turns out did not play. So, shucks on my part. <laughs> Even right, Jenny so Taft was... made a Mecca talk about JJ. He had to have been pissed. Nah, he wasn't pissed. Yeah. He wasn't pissed. So it I... was funny though that they tried to she tried then to talk to, to Jeremiah and then they got called onto the field. Like the second he the second the microphone was put into his face, they got called onto the field. It was pretty funny. Uh, wide receivers, Kyle. Where are we grading them? And maybe, maybe like an A minus. I no, there isn't really much to to pick on them. Like I watched, I watched the game, and I I can't really recall a time that there was like a wide receiver drop. Yeah. Um, so I'm giving them a B. Uh, it's not. It's a sp- I mean, at the end of the day, it's a spring game. It's not. It's not life or death. The the, the defense is understandably very far ahead of the offense right now, which is normally the case in the spring. But again, considering the the turnover on the offense and the lack of turnover on the defense uh, is to be expected. Uh, Mm -hmm. 
it's just, it's just to be expected. The, the wide receivers did not have a spectacular. Well, the wide receivers who we wanted to see have spectacular days didn't. Uh, David Adolph and, and Brennan Scram did. But yeah, it's just again, it's it's just a spring game. It's not that important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, let's let's move on to the defensive side here. As a reminder, I'm going to take a screenshot of this real quick here. As a reminder, here are Jared and I's teams for the defensive side here. There we go. All right. And yeah, defense, I think overall defense. Yeah, Dominated. we knew this, de this defense is what was one of the best defenses in the country last year, returning the vast majority of the starters back this year. All but three, yeah. right? Yeah. It's something like that. Yeah. It's yeah. This defense, this defense is early on show, show you how, how great this defense can really be this year. Yeah. Only losing Eichenberg, um, steel and, and Mike Hall. I mean, who are significant losses, but Ohio State looks to be replacing them very efficiently. Um, Jalen McLean, sneaky team, Jared W. Yeah, uh, I, I I agree. Uh, I I really like. I really like the linebackers, because like even though like you lose, you lose linebackers, but you have Simon, who's wasn't, but might, might as well have been a starter. You have coming down from the safety position who, so he started at safety. So you're kind of returning. It's weird. You lose your two starting linebackers, but the two linebackers you have on the team kind of started last year. And then like, in order to fill in the, the gap at safety, you bring in Caleb fucking downs. Ridiculous. Yeah. And, and we see like there, there was a number of times uh, there was at least like four, three or four times that they tried throwing it to downs. I don't think there was a single completion <laughs> where downs was covering a guy. Uh, and they they went at uh, Iggy a couple times at a fade in the end zone to the far side of the field. And Iggy was having none of it. None of it. Yeah. Gabe, uh, Gabe Powers but kind of flashed, I feel, says Esquire. Yeah, I, I mean, Caden Curry had a good day. Jack Sawyer, you know, again, it's a spring game. <laughs> but man, Jack Sawyer looks to be carrying the momentum that he had towards the end of last year, uh, at least through the spring. He, CJ he Hicks looks, had an amazing uh, day. Well, 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 back, back, back to, uh, back to Sawyer real quick though. Like just looking at him, he just looks, he looks lean. He looks so much more leaner than he did last year. He, he, he looks like a, a stereotypical, uh, Big Ten '90s middle linebacker right now. That, that's, that's what he end. looks like. Because that's Playing how that works. Because yes. that's how that works now. <laughs> yes, like man, he's. I, I am excited to watch number thirty-three uh, ball out this year. Yeah, Kyle. How do, how do we want to grade the defensive line? I mean, defensive line played really well. Not ju not just the not just your your typical ones that we're accustomed to seeing. Uh, Talik Williams had a good game. We talked about Sawyer, uh, Hamilton, but also the young, the young, young bloods too. Yeah, Hendrick yeah. Houston, Hendrick Houston, one of my one of my guys that I picked for for my team here. Jared, he had himself a, a game too. Six tackles, six tackles by him. Yeah, yeah. Caden McDonald stuffed the I, middle I, as well. Says I, Esquire. I, yeah, I I got I got to give them probably the highest grade here, like an A plus. I, the defensive line, just far, stellar, stellar. I already put an A plus for me as well, Kyle. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I mean, you did. Yeah, it. Uh, and again, it helps a lot that they didn't go up against Ohio State starting five as a full unit too often. Yeah. Um. 
they not only is Ohio State's defensive line one of the better units on the team, which is saying something. They also went up, you know, they had the <laughs> the benefit of going up against one of Ohio State's worst units. Yep. Yeah. All right, linebackers though. Again, I CJ Hicks in his first time out. You know, again, it's again, it's just a spring game. Again, it's just a spring game. But first time we see him starting had an excellent game. As Esquire pointed out, Gabe Powers had a really good game. Um, Sonny Styles has six tackles. Cody Simon didn't play a lot. He's got a thousand reps. He's in that thousand rep club. He didn't didn't have to didn't need to didn't need to play a lot. Um how helpful is Laurinaitis for Hicks consistency? Uh, is that is that a is that a rhetorical question or would you like me to answer that, counselor? It helps. <laughs> it helps both. It, 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 uh, good. <laughs> Very. Yeah. I, I mean, linebacker linebackers. I'm kind of torn on because I mean, one hand. Yeah, yeah. They they they've made a number of uh, really good plays here. Yeah, I I can't really grade them grade them low, so I'll I'll, I'll say like a like an A minus as well. I I really liked really like what from what I saw from the linebackers. They didn't they weren't playing out of position. Yeah, and and that's that's really what you what you want from these linebackers. Don't play out of position and make sure tackles again. You can't you can't answer that second question in the spring game here but that's what you want from the from the linebackers here. We, we we saw the young guys getting tackles we saw the younger guys getting tackles the starters not so yep. much but yeah all right uh corners though jared a yeah Cor- corners corners were locked down safeties were locked down i'm a, not a, a's all around a's all around for the corners and safeties for me well don't get too far ahead uh still talking about the corners. Um, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not going to give them a plus. I'm just going to give them an A. And the reason for that being some of those, some of those were are flags in actual football games. They, they were being very bumpy downfield. There, there was a lot of bumping, uh, a lot of grabbing happening downfield that once again, I think probably could have, you know, there was one pass interference call on the entire day. There probably been could have been a couple more. But uh, Iggy played really well. Jermaine Matthews played really well. Uh, Calvin Simpson Hunt played really well. Um, I don't ever remember. Did, did they even try to throw at Denzel Burke at any point during the day? I don't remember. Um <laughs> That's that's a good question, but uh, Aaron Scott, the uh, the true the true freshman here, had himself a really good game. Uh, he one of the most tackles for the defense, six tackles, four solos, also two two pass breakups in the game as well, and a Aaron near Scott interception. Had himself a really good game, a near interception as well, a near interception. Yeah, Calvin Simpson had an interception, uh, and then we had. We had a lot of uh, uh, a lot of players who weren't on scholarship that ended up getting interceptions as well in this game. For sure, who 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 all had interceptions here? It was uh, Inky Jones had one. Did he? I don't believe he he did. Not he according did. to the I, stats. I you, right. I, okay. Yeah, I, I I missed writing that one down. That that's that was my bad. Uh, okay. Inky Jones had one, Calvin had one, Deontay Griffin and uh, Jalen McLean all had a uh, interception as well. There you go. Jalen McLean, uh, true fresh or true freshman? Uh, yeah, true freshman. All right, safeties. I. I still say an A for the safeties as well. Safeties did a really good job in this game, so I, I give them an A as well. I agree. I mean, we're kind of already singing their praises. Um, I don't believe who did. Um, 
I'm I'm blanking all of a sudden. Uh, who who all played at safety? Jad Carter ended up not playing. Yeah, um, was, it looks surprised. He, he looked to have been in a shoulder there. brace. So we saw we got to see a lot of young guys running with the ones early. Um, that's one of the reasons why Hawkins, Hawkins was in there. Cedric Hawkins had five tackles for yeah. the game, so he, he got in there. I mean, we saw we saw uh, Caleb Downs obviously was in there. Inky uh, Jones uh, got time for Bonsu. Yeah. Bonsu was in there as well. Uh, he had himself a, another a great game too. Five tackles in, as well. Uh, who's going to transfer per Dave Biddle? Hand. Jihad. Yeah. Jihad Carter. Carter. Mm. Yeah. Um, that's not a shock. Um, he, he came in from Syracuse. I think people were expecting him to be more of a contributor than he's turned out to be. Uh, and there certainly have been injury issues play into that. Um, he can absolutely, but he's absolutely good enough to go somewhere and play. And he, therefore he should, you know what I mean? It's, it's the same thing. Yep. It's the same thing. You know, we, we have a lot to talk about and we haven't really, had an opportunity to really even talk about um, uh, talk about Dallin Hayden transferring. Um, let me just say this about Dallin Hayden transferring. A lot of people want to write a lot of, you know, no disrespect to any of the beat writers or any of the people who have to, write a column that has to be X number of words. They, you know, they got to go out there and people got to make their podcasts and people got to do stories. I get it. But let me tell you, uh, there's a, there's a lot of stories out there. A lot of people, Kyle, do we, do we have to grade the kickers? No, it's just an NA. Don't okay. worry about it. Okay. Nope. So yeah, let's, let's just talk. Let's talk. A, let's talk a bit of Dallin Hayden then. But before we do that, I think we should take a quick ad break and we'll get we'll get right into that here. So let, we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. That's a good tease, Kyle. All right. We're back from the break. Dallin Hayden. Again, no disrespect to any of the writers or any of the other podcasters who have to fill time. But I'm going to tell you guys exactly why Dallin Hayden transferred. Now, a lot of people want to tell you a lot of stories. They want to tell you, they want to, they want to write out this narrative and they want to tell you that I'm going to tell you why Dallin Hayden transferred and I'm going to do it. I'm going to tell you the whole damn story in one sentence. One sentence. Are you ready? He's too damn good to be the third running back. At the Nothing else needs to be said. Nothing else needs to be said. Dallin Hayden is too damn good to be the third running back. Well, the position coaches and the, and the, the, and the, the, and the, and the, the he's too damn good to be a third running back. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that. And too old. Yeah. Too good and too old slash experienced to sit around and be a third running back. Yeah, it's a it's a shame. I I, I liked Hayden from yeah. what, what I've seen with his time at Ohio State. It I, is I a wish shame, him it, well. It is, it is the truth. It is the truth. The second that the absolute moment that Judkins came in, Hayden was going to transfer. He's going to wait till the spring to do it, which is fine. That's a smart move in many cases. Sometimes it's just smarter to wait till the spring. He's too damn good to be the third running back. That's it. Mm -hmm. And when, and you know, we're not going to wildly speculate about who else is going to transfer. Again, the portal is going to open. 
the day we release this podcast. There's going to be additional Ohio State players enter that portal. And I'm going to tell you right now that the story at the end of the day, the story as to why any or all of them transfer will be they're too damn good not to be playing more. Period. This team is loaded with talent. Loaded with talent. So if X wide receiver, if this wide receiver, because look at the wide receiver room, it's bursting at the seams with talent. Someone's going to transfer. Yep. I'm not saying who. I don't know who. I could make a guess. I'm not going to. But players out of the wide receiving room are going to transfer at least one. I'd be shocked if one of the wide receivers doesn't hit the portal in this new portal opening. Why did they do it? Is there drama? Is there di- is because th- they're too damn good not to be playing more than they're going to be playing this year for Ohio State. That's it. We don't need narratives beyond that. We don't need storylines beyond that. There are a ton of amazing wide receivers, a ton of amazing safeties, a ton of amazing. Pick pick your position. Ohio State is so deep. Of course, I pick safety. They're not particularly deep at safety because of injuries at the moment. But Uh I don't know why of all the positions I picked safety to say. Ohio is amazing. Ohio State is amazingly deep at linebacker right now. So if and I and I'm I'm gonna pick I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Gabe Powers and I'm only gonna say Gabe Powers because he's so damn good. To be clear, I have no I I have no idea. I in fact I'd be surprised if he did. Just just to be clear, I'm not speculating. I'm not pushing anyone into the portal. <laughs> if I, if I use you as an example here, player. It's because I think you're very damn good. Gabe Powers entered the transfer portal this week. It's because he's too damn good and could be starting at most places in the country. Kyle, I mm-hmm. think I said this on the podcast last week. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Ohio State's second team defense. Could be. Uh, let, me, let me let me turn this into a question, Kyle. <laughs> too, the talent level is too damn high. How many? No one. How many teams in the country right now wouldn't? How many teams in the country right now would not trade their first string defense for Ohio State's second string defense? 11 for 11 players. How many teams in the country right now would not trade their entire starting 11 defensive players for Ohio State's second string defensive players? Especially from a talent standpoint. Like, okay, we if we remove experience, and you can't remove experience, but from a pure talent standpoint, most. Like, I mean, all but a handful. You start bringing experience oh, in, and yeah, it changes, would, right? Yeah, I, I, almost all of them. I would, I would, I would definitely say that almost all of them. But obviously, all you're, but you're cream, six, you're, seven, you're cream of the, eight. Your your cream, your cream of the crop, um, probably, probably be the exception to that. Like the, like the Georgia, or of course Georgia, of course would not. Yeah. And like even with the with the departures that Alabama has, I, I I'd still say Alabama still has a really strong defensive side. Still. Absolutely, uh, Alabama would not take that trade. Absolutely, mm-hmm. Texas would not take that trade. Texas would not either. Michigan wouldn't because Michigan. Um. <laughs> Michigan has a. I'm gonna say this. Michigan has an excellent starting eleven on defense. They 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 are struggling with death. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, yes, yes, agreed. And if you have any follow up questions on that, uh, 
a couple months ago, Kyle and I did an off season, know your enemy edition of Michigan, where we went through that defense uh, with or with that entire team with a fine tooth comb. And I'll tell you right now, they've lost players since then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ask Sloopcast. Fuck Michigan. Yes. Yes, indeed. Fuck Michigan. Um, um, sort of spring game related. Who is letting Urban leave the house wearing transition lenses in the year of our Lord 2024? Is are the transition lens? I'm I'm not an I I I have good eyes. I'm not bragging. That's not my doing. I don't take care of them. It's it's just genetics, I suppose. Are transition lenses uncool? I'm not a gla- I'm not a glasses wearer. I don't wear glasses. I don't have contacts. I listen, I'm, I'm an old man. I just, I just clocked the odometer just clocked over for me a couple weeks ago. I'm getting older by the day. My eyes still work and my hair is still here. Um, uh, I, I have blessed genetics. They're the Heelys of glasses. I feel like, listen, one of the great regrets of my life is that I was just a little too old for Heelys. <laughs> I remember being a teenager watching kids with their Heelys being like, damn, I was born too early. <laughs> I'd have loved that. All right, Jared. The important question, though. Yeah. Which team won? Team Kyle or Team Jared? All the votes went to you. I, you you okay. crushed me in okay, the but, in, but, in the Discord vote, but that's just but because people look, like but, you more. But if we look at how you, the, how each player did, how the players did that, here, but that's not how we drafted it though. <laughs> if we were trying to draft for stats, I would have been reaching down into the roster deeper. I wouldn't have been picking experienced players who we knew damn well were only going to get a couple drives. That's that's not a that's not a fair way of going about things. I would have I maybe would have drafted uh, TC Caffey or maybe even David uh, Adolf. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't have drafted David Adolf. But I but I probably would have drafted. Uh, an additional quarterback. Like I, we, we weren't, we weren't, cha- we didn't do fantasy. Kyle, we discussed before last week, should we do this based off of fantasy points? And then we decided not to do it because we both, bo- we both, am I Canadian? Because we both knew that if we did that, we'd both just end up drafting off of the third string because we knew they were going to get the most stats. We we had that discussion. And we decided not to do it that way. You can't all of a sudden start thinking, oh, well, what about fantasy stats? You can't change right, the right, rules right. the next week, Kyle. We decided all, all to right, do it. We decided to do it based off of the votes. And you crushed me in the votes. Do you need to win hey twice? Hey guys and gals. Do you need to all, all I hear all I hear here? All I hear. All I hear is that Team Kyle won. <laughs> you did. That's all I hear. We decided to do it based <laughs> off of votes. You won the damn votes. You can't all of a sudden decide a week later that we're also gonna do it based off of fantasy points. When that's not how we drafted the players, because you need to win twice, you selfish asshole. Do you need to beat me again? Do you need to beat me based both off of the rules we were playing by and the rules we weren't playing by? Do you need to win twice, Kyle? Do you want to really want to know the answer, Derek? I already know the answer. Yes. yes. <laughs> it was a rhetorical question, Kyle. Uh, well, spring camp's come and gone, Jared, and we have another four months until we see the players back in Ohio Stadium. I'm so upset at you. What else is new? 
Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> so we still got a couple more. We still got a couple more weeks before the transfer portal ends. So we're going to still see some more movement here. Jared and I, and I know many others, are hoping that Ohio State makes one more move to find find another offensive lineman coming into Ohio State here. See if that happens or not. But, but yeah, after that, Jared, on once May 1st comes around, the wasteland is here. The wasteland is here for a few months. Yeah. For, for three months. Kyle, we still need to figure out what we're doing for not next week. We know I think we know what we're doing for next week's episode. I don't think we have anything lined up. Cause I think we were gonna do like a draft preview, but There's not, are there enough Ohio State players in the draft this year? Will people actually give a shit if we do a draft preview or a draft recap? I think we have some holes in the schedule, if I'm being honest. We might need to work on that. We also might just take the first yeah. week of May off because we have some time away. Maybe, maybe we'll do a shelf episode. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. All right. I think that's it. I think I think we'll call that an episode here. Jared. Kyle, I asked, do people care about a draft episode? Uh, Esquire said probably not, and and Zach reacted <laughs> with one hundred percent. So I think that's the answer to our question, <laughs> guys. Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to get drafted high, and the Bears are fucking stupid for trading away Fields and not drafting Marvin Harrison. There's my draft preview. There, I did a draft preview. Are you are you proud of me? I'm so proud, Jared. Thank you. Bears are a shit show. Uh Bears have been a shit show since Brian Urlacher left. Not that it was Brian Urlacher's doing, but you know what I'm saying. Are you happy your fields ha your team has fields now though Jared? Yes, yes I am. I I I hope that he wins the job. I'd much rather see him starting. Yep. All right, Kyle. That's it. That's the end of the episode. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, not really. Uh, the talked about the the two commits on Saturday here with those commits, Ohio state is now according to, according to, um, on the, on three here, Ohio state is number one in the recruiting rankings here. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, and tell me if you've heard this one before, just need to sort of lock down some additional offensive linemen. Um, and then we'll be good. No, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be an offensive lineman light class for Ohio state in this, in the, in the 2025 class, because I think it's going to be a particularly good and a particularly large offensive line class in 2026. Um, the 2025 class is coming together very, very nicely. Um, Kyle, maybe we'll, maybe we'll, should we? Well, nah, the la last mock's not that old. I think it's too soon to do another mock. We'll, we'll figure out what we're doing yeah. over the next couple of weeks. All right. So they said on the broadcast, if if JJ is one on one, throw him the ball. That's all I need to hear. Yeah, yeah. guys, we, yes. we don't need he to did say that, by the way. Can And I'm just I'm just shooting down future podcast ideas. Let's 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 not do this, Kyle. This, here's an episode we should not do. Is JJ actually hold? We have a we're going to reshuffle the depth chart next week. Isn't that what we're doing next week? We're reshuffling. That is that, that is. All right. Next week, we're redoing the depth chart. And I'm letting you guys know right now. Let's not play this up for drama. Jeremiah Smith starting. Jeremiah Smith yeah. is going to start. Let's, if that ball, if that ball that was thrown, thrown to to JJ in the end zone there, if that was thrown higher and more towards the back. That's JJ all day. JJ all day. Hey, Kyle, here's an idea for an episode. It wouldn't be next week. It would be the week after. Should we do an in-depth breakdown, a, a scarlet and grade, all, but not a scarlet and grade? It would be a know your enemy of the Michigan spring game. A little bit of 
no. your enemy? No? No. No, we we've already done one too many episodes dedicated to Michigan here, so I don't I don't think three, we should do another. <laughs> three three straight losses, Kyle. It's uh it is what it is. It is what it is. Gotta keep an eye on the enemy. Gotta know our enemies, Kyle. All right, though, that's the end of the episode. That's Kyle's corner. That's the end of the episode. It's time to wrap this up. Um yeah, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Columbus-based band called Courtney from Work. Uh, once again, the name of this band is Courtney. Is that who I'm doing? Well, that's who I'm doing now because I said it. Um, so one way or the other, that's 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 who we're doing now. So uh, once again, the name of this band is Courtney from Work. So with all that being said, uh, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Courtney from Work. <laughs>